So, there are quite a lot of hairs to be split when it comes to mythology. Oftentimes, it's hypercritical pedantic sycophants, um, actually, in my comment section, but as it turns out, the Greeks and Romans were just as susceptible to inventing technicalities out of nowhere to make the whole field more confusing than it has any right to be. For example, if it is storming outside, whose doing is that? Normally, the obvious answer is Zeus, however, if it happens at night, then it's this guy, Sumanus. What's that? You've never heard of this guy and think it's ridiculous that the gods of Olympus would just trade positions like they're working different shifts at a 7-Eleven? Well, don't worry, poor viewer. The division of labor runs even deeper than that. Despite the fact that the sun canonically is pulled across the sky in a chariot of multiple different horses manned by one of these two chuckle fucks, depending on who's telling the story, the Greeks still bother to personify the dawn in the form of the minor goddess Eos, whose entire job in the pantheon was to open the stable so that the horses could get out each morning and then... Yeah, she was basically done for the day after that. Enter major character number two of today's story, Tithonus, the uncle slash brother of King Priam of Troy. Now, Tithonus was an absolutely insane individual who not only liked to get up before the crack of dawn, but also went outside. What is he, a responsible adult? In any case, this proved to be his undoing as being out so early meant that he was able to catch the attention of the otherwise closeted femcell Eos, who decided that he was a handsome enough boy, and did the reasonable thing, kidnapped him, locked him away in her room, kept him as a sex slave, and drained his balls all day every day whenever she didn't have to let the horses out in the morning. If you need a visual aid as to what this would be like for poor Tithonus, real-world lionesses in heat have sex 20 to 40 times per day, and if her mate can't keep up with her, this happens. That face says it all, don't it? However, apparently the Trojan royal family never bothered to go looking for their lost prince, and so he stayed positioned between Eos's Squishmallow collection and her Hello Kitty paraphernalia as a professional human dildo for several years until the Goddess of Dawn remembered that mortals have a tendency to, you know, die. So she came to Big Papa Zeus with a simple request. I was just wondering if you wanted to hang out with me and smoke weed and fill our bellies with diet soon and pay burn out revenge for the PS2. To make Tithonus immortal, which he was willing to grant probably because it was such a simple request. See, Eos forgot to add in the caveat of making Tithonus eternally youthful as well. And so, while she continued grinding his pelvis into dust, he continued <sighs> aging. And apparently, either nobody bothered to ask Zeus to keep him young after the fact, or he just couldn't be bothered with the whole glorified stable wench's boy toy beyond his initial favor, and so poor Tithonus completely shriveled up into an old fogey who couldn't get it up anymore, and hence Eos had no more use for him, so she decided to turn him into a cicada because she's a bitch. And that is the ancient Greek explanation as to why Cicadas supposedly make so much noise at the break of dawn. It's actually Tithonus crying and begging the goddess of the dawn for the sweet release of death, despite the fact that she's already found a new squeeze and has no more use for him and his shriveled old man cock. But that's a tale for another day. The moral of this story? Be careful what you wish for, yes, but also you need to take care of your sex slaves. They're like pets that you fuck and deserve love and attention just like they were real people.